Welcome back, folks. How do you like this gem? That's a 42 Ford uh, COE cab over engine. Kind of an interesting gem. We've got you know a fair bit of uh, holes in the floor and in the wheel wells and stuff. But we're trying to talk the customer into uh, maybe upgrading different motors. It's got an old flathead in it, and we're looking to see if he wants to modernize it a little bit underneath because these things didn't move that fast. So uh, we're hoping maybe a diesel, maybe some bigger Alcoas and a custom box on it. We'll see, this is still in discussion, but it's really cool. I just, I, when I saw the picture get sent to me, I said, now we gotta do this truck. It's just, you know, you just don't see them anymore. It's got so much character, but stay tuned. The guys will talk to you about it. So, um, you've got me doing a bunch of different stuff today. So uh, you'll be talking to John and and uh, some of the others in the shop about some of the projects that we're doing. So join me back inside. Morning, John. Good morning, how are you doing? So what the heck do we got here? Well, we got an old flat nose Ford. This thing's pretty cool looking, eh? Yeah, it hasn't been run in a long time. Um, so this basically has a flathead V8, um, carburetor, of course, uh, generator, uh, six volt system. And uh, we had to do some wiring. We had to basically uh, clean the points, set the dwell, um, put new plugs in it, and um, do some do some things to get it cranking over again. And uh, it's got spark, and it, it should go. So uh, we'll give it a shot. You said no brakes. There's no brakes. And we got to move this over to the other building. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, That's your little uh, jerry can set up there. Yeah, it had an electric fuel pump on it and it wasn't working. So basically uh, we put a fuel system <laughs> uh, caveman style. So it's got like basically it. a, a hose that's gravity feeding down into the carburetor bowl. So uh, hopefully it should work and give us enough flow to at least get it uh, to drive over. See what next happens. Week. Next fall. Well, I'll direct traffic and we'll see if we can get it fired up and All right. pull it out. See if we can get it going. <laughs> awesome. Let's try. <laughs> You doing a burnout? Oh, it's just smoking. Yeah. Look at this cool thing, eh? I'll make sure there's no cars coming in. Idles. No way, look at that. I wonder how many years it's been since this thing's run. You know what, I don't know. From the, from the look of the oil in it, probably <laughs> since we were kids. <laughs> yeah. It's got a PTO on it for the dump, and it's four-wheel drive, so it's it's a pretty cool old truck. I'd That's love killer. to get this thing running better and take it out in the mud. No doubt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, awesome, sorry. man.
So here's another Ford. Uh, we've got a few of them on the go. This is a 64 F100. So it was a long box. The uh, customer had bought it in the States and brought it up. And uh, you know, got a few issues, but um, what we did was uh, the short boxes just worth so much more money that we shrunk down the long box. So you can see where we grafted the pieces in and kept all the body lines here. So we've got, because it's got beautiful body lines. So we've got all that grafted in. Of course, we had to shorten the frame up. Uh, when it came in, the rims were right to the outer edge, just almost touching the wheel well. So we've got a, uh, a Mustang, basically a Fox body with rear end for it, which is about 54 inches across. So it's going to give us a nice uh, dish on the rims. Um, got a small block in it. We're going to be doing the interior. It's going to be a Nardo gray with uh, black rims, black accents, grill, bumper type stuff. So it's going to be really sharp when it's done. We're, uh, we've got the hood and doors and uh, front fenders, everything in primer on the, on the other side here. up as cab corners and stuff like that so we're, we're getting there question for you Gary yep. these trucks here did they ever come in a short box yes they did oh they did okay they did, but they're extremely hard to find yep so there's a lot of long boxes they like the eight foot box for you know obviously for construction and stuff like that farms and stuff so this is this uh, setup is very hard to find so that's why we decided to shorten it increases the value of the truck considerably so how did you guys go about chopping this down into a short box? Was it one cut, two cuts? Well, it ended up being two cuts. We took the dimensions from, uh, from a sh an actual short box um, F100 and we compared it to the long box. And uh, we actually kept all the factory uh, mounting holes the, for the lag bolts that go through the frame. And we, what we ended up doing was at the front of the box here, we cut out uh, 12 inches um, to make the space from the front of the box to the wheel well, equivalent to the short box truck. And at the rear, we actually cut out six inches to make the space from the tail of the truck to the wheel wells the same. And all of the factory mountain locations are all, all proper. We took 12 inches out of the frame rails themselves and uh, we gusseted and reinforced the inside of the frame rails to make it just that much stronger. And everything Thus far, it was lined up perfectly. Then all you need to do now is just get a new drive shaft, I guess, shortened drive shaft. Shortened drive shaft, or one from the original short box truck would even work, but in this case, we're doing a four link rear suspension on it. So um, it's we're better to have a, a little bit of a, a, a beefier setup under there. Typically, we'll have all new drive shafts made up anyway for anything that we lengthen or shorten or do any real modifications for the suspension and drive lines. What do we got here? Yeah, we got another one. It's a 51 Ford. And uh, what we're doing on this is we've got a big honk of diesel uh, in it. And um, we're doing a, just a bunch of upgrades, uh, steering. We've uh, plated the frame. Um, we've got all the interior parts for it and stuff. Uh, the steering and these front suspension, it's uh, different with this big of motor in it. A lot more weight there as opposed to the little flathead that was in these things so got a little bit of design work to do as Dave knows yes yeah so tell us about what you did there with the with the motor set back and the tolerances and stuff and what yep. you've done in the front here so uh, originally <laughs> these trucks were never meant to have uh, an engine of this stature uh, placed into the frame rails uh, so what we've ended up doing to stiffen it up is, like you said, we plated the inside of the frame rails um, to support the extra weight uh, so we don't twist the frame. We've had to make some custom motor mounts to fit this motor specifically. Um, what worked out really well is if you take a close look at the, the back of the engine here right versus the, the firewall, how close um, that is. <laughs> we're, we're three eighths of an inch away from the firewall. 
Um, not much room as well as up front. The factory cross member has just cleared the uh, the pulley setup. On that it. looks like it was even notched too, or is that factory? That's, that's factory. Wow. So <laughs> it was um, meant for it. Took kind of <laughs> took advantage of that, and that leaves us enough room to slip the belts on. Um, we've got some suspension work to do. The straight six leaf springs um, that ran at factory. Just cut it. <laughs> just not holding up. Yeah. Wow. It's what would you do there? Would you add a leaf or do something completely different? Um, you know what? It, it, I don't mind sticking with the, the solid front axle, but what I would prefer to see on there um, would be something more of like an airbag setup or air assisted setup. Yeah, temporarily we've got the timber and um, uh, load levelers at the front here just to see where it squashes out. And uh, I think the weight difference is a few hundred pounds at least. Yeah, this I believe this engine is somewhere right around 1,100, 1100 pounds. pounds you know, wow, like, would this have came with a, like a six cylinder or a V8 originally in this truck? Um, it had a flathead uh, V8 in it, which is a considerably lighter. You know, you figure your average small block's probably five, 600 pounds, so this is almost double the weight. So, Cast iron international motor from a school bus. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> a little bit different. Outstanding. We're some stacks out the. He wants a checker plate in the uh, floor of the truck, and then he wants stacks up through the floor of the truck. I believe up yeah. the back of the cab. So he's got to have his little personal touch to it. There's a bunch of different stuff that we got to do on it. So. We're up to our eyeballs in trucks and cars right now, so we just keep moving from vehicle to vehicle. Well, we're, uh, that's a little mini, mini Ford pickup truck tour for this week. Uh, stick around, we've got some real interesting stuff coming in the shop here. We've got a uh, one of five 71 Cuda that was stolen a number of years ago, and the owner's got it back. And it's a Hemi, four-speed, convertible, red with white. Uh, numbers matching. They found all the parts that got stolen off of it, except for a few minor ones. So hopefully next week we're going to give you a, a roundabout on that. Uh, we'll revisit the Charger. Uh, we've got some more stuff going on with that car. So all you Mopar nuts, come back.